I'm James Heimbach, the product manager for the Verify testing team at GitLab. Uh, today I'm walking through a deck that I put together, uh, just kind of an overview of the group, some of the features, uh, the categories that we're responsible for, uh, where we're at today and where we're going in the not so distant future. Uh, so I just wanna start with the mission for the testing group. Uh, Verify testing group provides an automated testing integration into GitLab. We aim to allow software teams to be able to easily integrate many layers of testing into their GitLab CI workflow. And we really want software teams to feel confident that the changes they're introducing into their code are safe and conformant. So our vision, long-term, where we want to get to is that a developer can commit code and have that code into production in an hour or less uh, from the time of the first commit to the MR. Uh, we think that by presenting data from unit tests, performance, accessibility testing, et cetera, et cetera, that we can support that shorter cycle time and continuous feedback for developers. And this will reduce operational costs and complexity. And we can also surface data to managers, directors, VPs, the overall quality of the projects that we collect as part of those runs. Uh, so we talk a little bit about the jobs to be done. Uh, we talk primarily about jobs that software developers need to do and that dev team leads need to do day-to-day. Uh, -day. Things like review test results or review the static quality analysis scans, uh, compare accessibility of their app from before their change to after their change. Uh, these are all things that developers need to do day-to-day -to, -day to ensure that they have that confidence in their change. And then we understand that team leads want to be able to track progress over time that their team is making, progress of test coverage, project progress of code quality, and any number of other performance metrics really around the project itself and how it is shaping up. And you can see all of the verified testing jobs to be done and our maturity grades on our team page, which I'll link to in the video below. So some of the current capabilities that we have as a team, uh, most of our capabilities lie in code testing and coverage, where you can review failed tests in MRs and in pipelines. You can see how test coverage is changing within an MR. Uh, at the project level, you can see historically how test coverage has changed within the project as well as at the group level. Uh, and you can also start to visualize that within MR diffs, uh, if a code change is covered by a test or not. Within code quality, we allow you to review code quality changes again within the merge requests or within the pipeline. We're going to be introducing soon a feature that expands on that. I'm excited to talk about later in the, in the video. We also have similar reviewing load performance changes, accessibility changes, browser performance changes. These are all things that you can look at both or mostly in the merge request to compare how is my change going to affect these metrics. So I want to talk a little bit about where we offer value across the tiers within GitLab. Uh, within the free tier, we offer to developers a lot of those capabilities within the merge request. I can see how accessibility, code quality, test results are changing because of my change. Compare that against the branch I'm going to merge into. And then team leads can track that test coverage, how it is changing over time. All of those are enabled at the free tier uh, and available to everybody. If you move up to premium, then developers can start to see how load testing, browser performance testing is changing, uh, adding in those capabilities and seeing that within the merge request and also recording custom metrics. If you're looking at things build to build to build, uh, gem size is one that our team looks at. That is a feature that comes to you in the premium tier. And then directors, team leads can start to track test coverage within all of the projects of a group. So you can start to see at the group level, how is uh, the test coverage trending and then can dig in. Uh, also, the code quality full report is available at the premium tier. The code quality merge request widget is available in the core tier. And then ultimate tier, we're just starting to introduce some features here to our ultimate customers. Uh, developers are gonna be able to review code quality changes in the MR diff. This is one I'm excited about and is gonna be releasing soon. Uh, our first iteration shows that a file has a change and our second iteration will show that in line in your MR diff. There's no more bouncing back and forth as a developer between the test summary widget or the code quality widget and the MR diff view to see, hey, has this change also modified code quality? It's simply looking at it on the MR diff page, seeing this line that has been changed has a new code quality violation. That can help inform you as you're doing your review what, how that needs to be fixed, how we can improve that change. And further down the line, further down the line, directors, we want to be able to review the overall quality of a project, tracking those changes over time, things like test coverage over time, code quality over time, test execution history over time, 
those are things we understand that, that those personas want, those users want, and that's something that we want to deliver to them. So our near-term roadmap now, we've already talked about, the team is currently working on, as of today, April 12th, getting those code quality violations into the MR diff view. The next thing that we're going to be jumping into is improving that code quality experience by letting teams customize which violations they see. If I don't care about any of the informational, I don't want to show that as part of my full report or my merge request diff view. It's just noise to our developers and slows down our cycle time. We also want to be able to block that merge using our merge request approvals if quality is degraded, the code quality violations have increased, or if test coverage has degraded. If I see an increase or decrease rather in the percentage in test coverage because of this change, it needs to be approved or it's a blocked merge request. And letting teams that are using those rules um, apply them to this as well as security and license compliance. Later down the line, what we're going to work on is helping teams identify flaky tests with a project history report, seeing how over time a test has been passing or failing. This builds on an MVC that we introduced recently that counts how often a test has failed in the last 14 days on your default branch so that you can start to get a hint of is this a flaky test or is this something that really I need to go address. And then that view of overall project quality, being able to look at a dashboard to see, hey, you know, is test coverage changing over time? Is our code quality changing over time? And in which direction is that change going? So I hope you've enjoyed this quick overview of the testing team and what we're working on today. Uh, I'll be updating this as time goes on so we get a new view of what we're working on now, next, and later. Thanks.